Okay, are we recording? Yes, we are. Hey, Anna Lee. Hello. In complete transparency, me and you actually haven't talked, talked, really talked at all nope. since the last live. So that's right. This is, gonna, this is gonna be a really good catch up, I feel. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen on this live? Well, I did have only one question that I wanted to start things off with that I thought would be a good one. Um, not to be a Debbie Downer, but I did notice like about a week ago or a few days ago, I don't I can't keep track of time. Time is just out of my head these days. Oh yeah. I had noticed that you were going through some valleys. And I wanted to talk about that if you were okay with disclosing, you know, the some of that stuff you went through, because I feel like everyone's going through these peaks and these valleys. And mm -hmm. I feel like it would be really advantageous for everyone to hear. Yeah, I'm always willing to share. I'm super open. <laughs> same, and same. That's why, well, that's why I've also posted it because you don't, well, you don't have to post anything on Facebook, right? We're all choosing to post, but Monday, it happened on Monday and Monday was the new moon. And I'm starting to realize, like I track certain things on my phone. I'm like, you know, I think the new moon really might affect me more than the full moon or, or it's different. And mm -hmm. so that's one thing I knew was happening. So my day started normally teaching yoga. And then I went on with my day and then just all of a sudden out of nowhere, I just feel this giant wave of like emotions of like sadness. And it's just really strong. And I feel things really intensely and deeply and viscerally. And so I'm like, whoa, okay. Um, ooh, like, okay, I better like move through this because I got to teach yoga again later and try not to be like a complete mess. <laughs> and so I do my things. I came into this studio and I was crying. I didn't have to try. It was just there and feeling these things. And, and then um, like matching the music, kind of playing music to evoke it and, and doing some gentle movements and dancing. And it really just wasn't going anywhere. I'm like, well, I mean, is this really all of mine? And it was like, no, because <laughs> I tend to, I can feel the collective, collective energy. And there are also some people in my life who are going through some, again, powerful transitions and I can feel their stuff. I mean, I can feel everyone's stuff. Like someone comes for a session, I've already connected to them before I've even met them or know them. And when they're walking and I see them from the car, I can already tell where they're at. Like I can feel it. Right, right. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's really important that we have to realize that um, we do is, you know, and some of us more than others, obviously, because we're all in different paths and we're all on different levels of what we experience and what we feel. But I think us particularly, because um, me and you've spoken about this many times, we both have a very um, high level of feeling other people and their emotions yeah. and what they're going through. And so even if someone doesn't speak to us and they're in the next room or mm -hmm. they're passing by us, or like you said, they're, you know, out in the parking lot, it's still a very, very like strong feeling. I'm like, you know, just to give you a, an example of something that I just witnessed yesterday, which was very kind of visceral to me, you use that word and that's a really mm -hmm. potent word. I yeah. was driving down the street. I was heading to meet somebody. I was going to um, the Krishna temple, the local Krishna temple. And I was going to meet a friend for coffee beforehand. And I was driving down a very main road. And um, I literally glanced over and I was like, I was pulled into it. Like, and I know you know what I mean. And I'm going to oh, yeah. try to explain it to like the general audience that may or may not understand what I'm saying. Like, I literally was driving and it was as if I was coming out of my body right in front of the person and experiencing the exchange that these two people had and what was happening, which was kind of not really fun to see while you're trying to drive a car, is yeah. somebody was fighting another person and then there was a truck next to me that had stopped in the middle of the lane 
and was attempting like he was going to get out of the truck to like st step into this fight and then right. all of a sudden one of the guys that was involved in this fight stopped waved to the guy in the truck like as if to say like <laughs> it's all good he proceeds to walk on this other guy is like on the side of the road he looked homeless he had no shirt on and but the the whole point of me telling this story isn't to share something horrific it's to say that like literally i felt as if i was like right there like uh, like a, an inch away from this whole experience and i was yeah. actually in my car like probably 40 or 50 feet away but yeah. it was so the energy was so like anger and strong and mm -hmm. and and forceful that i got pulled right into it and like of course you know i sent some reiki and i sent you know some love and i sent my energy of like strength and you know reached out to the angelics and do the things that i always do in yeah. any of these kind of situations but it's just very like right now the 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 brimming of emotion is yeah. so it's boiling so high and so Very that it's like you know the, those of us that are holding spaces for this stuff is like we really got our job cut out for us right now oh, because yeah. it's I really feel, intense. Uh, again I feel I mean I signed up for this I'm doing this I have the capability sometimes though I tell the universe I feel like I'm being tortured you know I mean like <laughs> What the fuck? I mean, you know, can you tone it down? They're like, no. Like, oh, okay, well, you know, they're like, dig deeper. I'm like, Whew. you know, I'm glad I'm so strong and stable because I, I mean, it might, it may, if someone didn't just have have as many skills yet, right? Because this is all practices that build up over time. It could break someone, you know, or they're just like, you know, I and I do know some people who are working to gain more skills of how to deal with the emotions and energy and they're more immobilized right and and then i feel for those people too like what do you do when you can barely get out of bed because you're just feeling the weight of the world or maybe your own life and then other things and you can barely get out of bed and it, like the function like living like you know yeah and i like really hard and I, and I and i'd like to touch upon a little bit like in my humble opinion and what I've gathered from from so many different sources is that we're literally having a crumbling of <laughs> the old world and what's happening. And I was talking to um, KG, who is is, um, you know, a strong do devotee of Krishna that runs that Krishna yeah. temple. And what I was speaking with him yesterday about is how people are holding desperately on to the old paradigm that is yep. no longer existing so they're like holding on to nothing but they're yep. clenching so tightly to this fabric that no longer exists but they don't they're not ready to acknowledge that it doesn't exist yet and i yep. know this is all seems so metaphoric to you know to to some people like that they can't really conceptualize what i'm saying but i'm basically saying like everything that we think that what things are is not what they are and now people are starting to realize it's not what we thought that it is and so yeah. now they have to literally become fluid yeah. and like becoming Asking fluid becoming fluid for people that that don't that like structure and control it's like it's like an element that they just you know it's like horrifying to them in some ways like they can't it's it's hard for them to adapt to that oh, and it so is. it's really hard and i see that in in my own family like in some people who are really close to me uh i meet that level of resistance sometimes uh whenever i see them and i mean i'm even though i am this truth speaker and all of that there's sometimes when i'm just like well my words are not doing anything and i already know that but so it's becoming really apparent though that yeah they're they're just there's this push but it's so shattering to someone it's so dissonant the cognitive dissonance of like wait you mean this whole thing wait they just can't hang they just shut down way down head in the sand 
And and I feel like and some people are handling it that way and then other people are getting very angry and violent. And that's why <laughs> like I saw the like situation in the street. It's like yeah. you know, people are just they're so frazzled and so like but they don't know what to put their finger on and that's why I think us doing these videos and us speaking about this for for anybody that will come across this video because you know everything comes to who it's supposed to come to and yep. whoever's meant to hear this can understand that there's a lot of the population that is going through this right now and they just think that that they're that they're personally going through something they're like feeling like maybe a mental breakdown or yep. maybe they're feeling that they're tired or they're just not understanding the full scope and like um something that was made clear to me yesterday i was watching something um from jason estes and what he was talking about is because he always talks about everything in like data points and mm -hmm. what he was trying to explain is that now people are having they're they're having um their bodies are they're they can't take care of their physical bodies where they can usually recover when wow. they rest or when they when they do things they can recover but they're having just enough strength just to process the energies that are coming through and the you know the amount of information that's coming mm -hmm. through from the cosmo and the universe that is coming in so fast and so furiously they're taking every bit of their energy just to be able to process that through their body. And they're right. not able to spend any time to, to literally like heal their body. Like normally, you know, we process information and then we have extra time to like process our healing. Like we, right. our bodies can naturally heal itself. So what's happening is people are either getting very sick very tired or they're dying because they cannot physically process the stuff yeah. that's coming through and so it looks like on a lot of levels all of a sudden people are just dying and dying quickly and people are thinking oh you know it's a heart attack or it's this or it's that no really what it is is their bodies are not able to process and or heal because their body has not they have not you know released enough yeah. over their their you know their their lifetime to be able to handle what's coming through and the you know for myself the only thing that i can really say that i've really really been affected is i've been very intermittently exhausted like yeah. just randomly exhausted and mm -hmm. then i'll be like i'll start yawning and i'll be like wow i could go to sleep right now and then sometimes i'll like take a quick nap if i if i can and yeah. sometimes i can't and i just have to muscle through it but it's really important to try not to muscle through it if you can have the availability to rest because yeah, rest it's really important. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what about you? I mean, I know that you use a lot of tools just like yeah. I do. And so I know those things help you. But like, what are you doing in a pinch? Uh, I think, well, I think before it's what am I doing in a pinch? I think this is a greater call to people to say, hey, it's time to address your own energies. You have an energy body, you have, yes, physical body, but you have an energy body, you have this energy field and, you, and then the emotions are stored in there and it's time to start moving the energy because opening the chakras, getting it flowing and fluid so that the energy can come in more clearly and move in and out like a like a transmitter signal so that's kind of my thing and it doesn't have to be big or grand just sit down and start focusing on your breath and just start sensing because again it's the subtle realm so people think i don't feel anything well just pretend imagine if you did feel something what would it feel like what does it look like? I don't see anything. Well, what if you did, you know? And so just starting to work with that energy, because if people aren't working with their energy bodies, they may not, they may, like you said, they're not going to maybe make it through, you know? And it's really important to start connecting to your body in this deeper way, which has been, there's so many things out there, so many videos a person could watch. It just depends. What are you called to? But really, you, you can just start every moment. Just close your eyes, start breathing and checking in because you're going to feel things. And then you just start start moving it like. Ugh. And I and I think the call now is. It, 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 
it's I, I hate to use the word but it's it's like an emergency of like going within like yeah. there's no more it's like, like <laughs> it, it's not like okay, like I, I can go like smoke a bunch of weed or nope. drink a bunch of alcohol or eat a bunch of food or have a bunch of sex. Like none of those things are going to fix any of this. Like They're not working none of it. those things are going to adjust you or even most of those things aren't even going to give you any temporary highs anymore. Like there's yeah. such a level of high, such a strength of energy that's coming through that you literally are like, have to be processing constantly. And if you like miss a beat, you know, it, it, it's going to be detrimental on some levels. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and, but again, what do I do besides the things I do? I do actually have time. I have, I have that gift of having space. And so I actually, that you, I, that you created, that you created. Oh, I, oh, I created this. <laughs> I you hard, created that. You created that work. space. Yeah, you created people, that. People think, oh, you're working all the time. No, I'm not. No, I, hey, let's be clear. I hardly work. <laughs> but I created this time. So I actually take, take it easy a lot because I need that space to rest because I am, I am one of the digesters or processors or transmuters of, of this States we're living in at a higher level and so it's like I need to rest so I lie down uh, like heated devices heating pad heated things I just like to relax and I listen to audiobooks that have no deep meaning because I cannot handle hearing more and more and more information like there are times when I'm called like ooh, I'm ready to receive but for me I've I'm like that's enough I'm living I'm experiencing these things that I've been hearing about, like I'm all about embodying it on a day-to-day -day basis. Great, I learned that meditation technique. Now I'm actually doing it. Now I'm doing these things. So I just turn on something else and then my body can relax. And then if my guides or other things wanna be working on me on some other level, that permission is there so that I can feel refreshed and fully present when I'm doing yoga or doing, doing my healing sessions. Otherwise I'd be just like fried, you know, like, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I'm really, really paying attention. Like, like even myself, like, like today, like I, I really had all intentions that I was going to be walking on my lunch break. Cause I typically do that on all nice days. But for some reason today I was like, I sat and I hung out in my car and I ate some sushi and I, I relaxed. And I was like, I was for a moment, I was fighting myself. Cause I was like, <laughs> go walk, go walk you know, right. your body, you go walk. And then my body's like, no, don't walk. Don't walk. Take it like, easy. My body was like, take this hour and just sit and like, don't feel guilty. Don't yep. like tell yourself a story that you're not you're getting your exercise or something wrong. Like my body is telling me, relax, like yeah. sit in this hour and don't concentrate on anything just enjoy the energy of the park enjoy your car because you know even like like temperature extremes are like even affecting me more than they normally do I'm mm. I'm a, I've always been in the past able to power through extreme temps and now like my body like okay like I want you to take it easy like I don't want you to try to power through that and yeah. so like that's hard for me because you know, as a Sag, we yeah, power so, through a lot. We yeah. power through a lot. And so like, it's one of those acts of, like you said, listening to your body. Like, even though my, there's part of my mental that says you need to do X, Y, Z for your body. My, my internal gauge is like, you need to rest. Like yep. you need to let your body rest. Like yeah. you don't have to walk up the steps three times at a hundred steps <laughs> every day. And that doesn't have to be every day, Jill. Like, okay, yeah. that's a good practice. Your body likes the exercise. These are things that like, I'm really, really like tuning in. I'm like fine tuning on yeah. this is what I need. And like, even listening to like my body when it says, okay, I want this to eat today. Like today I was like guided for sushi. It's like, you need sushi. Like I don't typically eat sushi on my lunch break, but I was like, you need to go get some sushi. 
And I also got mangoes, which I oh, love mangoes, good. but usually the two things together don't <laughs> typically mix. But I was like, you need mangoes, you need sushi. And so I, that's what I ate, you know, and I listen. It's like there's there's calls from our body, from, you know, our inner voice that tells us we just yes. have to pay attention. Yeah. And so maybe the signal is just getting stronger, hoping that everyone will listen to their own their own intuitive impulses because the world we're moving into will be a much more fluid, intuitive, energetic space, right? So having those prerequisite skills will help you, you know, be ready for that new class or that new whatever it is um, we've been training. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I, I feel like, a lot of us are are really in fine tuning these things. And one of the things that I've been made very clear to myself is that what may have worked last month or six months or a year ago is not going to be the, the thing anymore. You know, it that's may- not going to be the, the, the thing, you know, there's certain things that are going to be timeless. And then like, like, of course, breathing and, and eating, you know, eating healthy. I think eating lighter is, is a, is a big thing right now to eat is eat lighter I feel like that's going to help our bodies because the more we have to process physically that taxes from the energy bodies to 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 read you know to process that out and so like that's something that I'm being very keen on like I keep getting very guided to do like juices and smoothies and you know like more than I I've always liked them but now I feel like I have to do them so it's like yeah, yeah. 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 And so that I just again we talked about that last time, but it again it it seems normal to us, but I can tell you because again I interact with a lot of people and, and they're coming to what I'm doing in more of a, a wellness healing context, right? So that's how I can kind of get all this information. It's not common. It's not as common. Like when I say something that I might say to you, and you're like, Yeah, of course, I say this to the another person here and they're they, it, they're like whoa it like blew their world apart and I'm like oh my <laughs> god that's right that's like they're you know this is like where do you start you know like little baby steps but paying attention to your body paying attention to your emotions feeling them not suppressing them and then giving yourself permission guess what I feel like shit today you know what I'm gonna just allow myself to just do if if you can it's harder if you're like I have to go to work you know that kind of you do you're powering through but then when you get home that's when you could be like what's really gonna be best for me right now maybe it's just lying in bed and then that critic comes in and it's like you should and you're like you should get the hell out of my head (laughs) because I know what I'm gonna do turn on this book and whoa, they're having a good time in this book. (laughs) I'm into this world. (laughs) No, I know. And it's like, it's funny because there's like, there's a certain amount of seriousness about our conversations, but also like, I feel like part of like my life every day is about being silly and about laughing and about having fun. And I feel like if I didn't have the ability to laugh so much all the time, I really feel like laughter has helped my physical and mental body in my oh. entire life. Yeah. I don't I don't feel like I could have even gotten through half of what I've gotten through physically in this world if I didn't have the ability to laugh and to, and to make others laugh. Exactly. And not even like trying to make people laugh but you know Annalie we just make people laugh like it's right. just it's, that's what I wonder too not that it's all everyone is just like their sign but there is stuff to it because I have that same thing and we are have a lot in common because people laugh all the time at stuff I say but I I'm not trying <laughs> Like I could, I don't even have a joke memorized. Sometimes I think I should have a few in my back pocket for a right moment, but they just laugh at the way I'm talking, not at me, but you know, I'm like, I don't know. And we just laugh. I get people to laugh in yoga, you know, that's funny. 
you know, and they're feeling, which, you know, usually you're not laughing while you're like in yoga. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, I just, I think it's part of like the sarcasm and the wittiness and the, and the just being real and raw. Like, I feel like a lot of people love, like, it's like a double-edged sword. It's like, they love it or they hate it. They either can't tolerate it or they're like oh my god this chick is so freaking funny because she just says shit that like I think but I would never say oh, and yeah, like totally. that's, and that's like but it's not like you said it's come we come by it naturally it's not forced it's not on purpose but it but it, I do believe that somehow we are naturally in some ways comedic um yes, and maybe yes. we have to be because maybe some of the things we're saying are so like could be so sharp that if we <laughs> kind of are spinning them in a silly way that right. like it, it's it's received in a way that can be handled but yeah. i think a lot of people don't even realize that we're like giving them a message <laughs> they're just maybe like, not laughing. yeah i do have one friend and she obviously knows me and how I communicate and all that, but she called it bee stings. I'm giving her <laughs> bee stings. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, hey, look, we're conversing. She might have said something. And here is me as a 5 1 projector. Here's this information about yourself. You were asking for truth, right? <laughs> zing, 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 zing. Well, but I mean, hey, a bee sting is much better than an arrow. Or your arm being chopped off. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and I've learned to tone it down because I've I've actually been informed by people in my life that like I can get really serious and my tone like of my voice can get really sharp and harsh. And so, and that's not really the place I want to come from. And so I have to, you know, remember like, hey, soften, I'm getting really intense or I'm getting really kind of aggressive or whatever. And again, you know who this is always reserved for? Oh, those closest to you. <laughs> Poor yeah, Oliver. It's, like, it, it's, it's, yeah, well, it's, it's funny because we draw in what we need. But then sometimes when we get it, we're like, I didn't want that. I didn't order it. Well, that's what you ordered. You put that on the sure ordered it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, when you're, when, you know, when it's on a day to day basis, you know, sometimes, and it's, you you know, you're with your family for a reason. You're all here working on different things and you trust each other and love each other at these very deep levels, you know, like just choosing these roles this time. So who better to kind of provoke you? I mean, it may not feel good in the moment, but remember we signed up for it or like, guess what? This time I'm working on patience and acceptance. So here are these people who are like the hardest to, can you accept them? They're totally a mess and dysfunctional and they're just this, can you accept them? And you're like, oh man, I'm doing my best. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting how our roles play out in each lifetime. And I was talking um, once again. I'm referring back to my friend KG, who I was um was co- conversing with yesterday, and and we were talking about um the Bhagavad Gita, and we were talking about um because because when he has when they when we all get together part of what we do is we sing you know the Hare Krishna mantras but then yeah. we also he do, like they usually pick verses out of the Bhagavad Gita and they'll they'll discuss stuff and I said you know we were talking about bringing people in and having people come and and I said to him that me and him have worked together in many lifetimes and and I know that I've I've been Hindu in many lifetimes. And so mm. even though I don't know all, I can't, you know, can't speak Sanskrit in in hardly any, um, I do have such a familiarity with yeah. all of it that like I can get through it fairly easily because of my remembering so yes. much. And yeah. and that's what we were speaking about because I said a lot of people get very overwhelmed when you pick up the Bhagavad Gita, because there's so much Sanskrit in it. It's so complex. It it (laughs) is. And there's so, and there's like story upon story upon story upon story. There's so many layers that, that 
that if you don't have some remembering, <laughs> it will literally consume a person and they will be like lost and they don't want to have anything to do with it because it's not um like it's so ancient yeah. and it's so many stories and it's so deep that it's like you like sometimes when I listen to him and I feel his energy, I know he's channeling. Yeah. And I, and like, he wouldn't necessarily say that, but mm -hmm. I know he's doing it because yep. there's absolutely no way that he, you know, from, from the information and the years he's been doing in the human body, that he would be able to have that kind of facility to be able to express and, or speak on the things that he does in the way that he articulates. Mm -hmm. And so I always look at people and I can see like, I can go in and see different, um, I can see their, their, sometimes their other versions. And I, I had an interesting ha thing happen with him um, actually last night where we were, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but we were having a conversation and he was saying very little words, but he was like talking to me in words. And then he was talking to me in telepathy but he was doing them like in succession. So yeah. he would say a few things and then he would say a few things, you know, t t with telepathy. Yeah. And so we were doing this back and forth for probably like 30 or 40 minutes. And I was so revved up energetically because I was keeping up with him. And there's yeah. very few people that I can do this with. And so right. it's almost like really good practice yeah. for me. And I don't, mm. and no, and the thing is, no one knows what's going on unless no. they know telepathy, which most of them d didn't in that room. So nobody had a clue that we were doing that. And so yeah. it was really interesting. And then my friend that I, that I brought, she, I, I tried to explain this to her after we left. And I was like, wow, I was like, that was exhausting, but that was so awesome. And she's like, why, what happened? And I, explained it to her and she she could understand on some level of what I was telling yep. her but I know that that's like something that a lot of people don't have experience in and no. they they would wouldn't understand what I'm what you know what well, how that they, interplay is they think it's science fiction but the thing is some of it might be true <laughs> <laughs> like what was that show it's from I don't know, 15 years ago, but it was, oh yeah, Heroes. Mm -hmm. Did you I remember that. that. There's mm -hmm. uh, all these kids and they have mm -hmm. abilities, tele yep, yep. telepathy, telekinesis. Yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. all of those exist. Some people can master them and they do them. And then interesting, we're talking about telepathy because my good friend who I just connected, like we're recently good friends and there's obviously like, we're supposed to, we're coming together and he just called me the other night. He's going through a hard time, but we were talking about that. And then he said, you know what, Anneli, it's time for us to get together and practice telepathy and these things. Would you like to do this? And I said, yeah, I'd like to do this because I'm being called in the, in the astral realm, in the other realms at night. I've been doing a lot of work that, you know, again, this starts to sound like, yeah, these people, they're like so out there, but this isn't, it's really not that out there when you start getting into what this reality is, because I'm doing this work and it's now time to practice with real people in this time, because that's the vision I've always seen of how we're going to actually have this shift that everyone talks about see a lot of people blah blah talking about it. how much are they doing energetically within and connecting to others it's helping that because sometimes they aren't doing much and that's okay but it's like we're gonna all if we could that's why when you have mass meditations like hundreds or thousands of people those are the really powerful things that are happening um the grid of light and consciousness that's why they don't want people coming together. Because if you're together, you're connecting and you're elevating, your heart is radiating out and it's electromagnetically so powerful. And then if your Merkabas are connected and then your mind's open and then you start mm -hmm. chanting, preferably Sanskrit probably, that's when it could be really, I don't know, you know we need yeah. enough people. Yeah, I feel like whenever I like when I'm at the um when I'm at the Krishna temple and we're chanting, I feel literally 
the warmth and the light and the energy of every single person. And yeah. as we get faster and we speed it up, I like literally spin it and I spin it in the house and then I spin it in the street and then I spin it in the neighborhood and then yeah. I keep spinning it. I spin it I, as far out as I possibly can spin it. And right. that's what, that's, that's part of what I do. Part of and what I do all, with light and energy. And it's all still spinning out there. Every sound that's ever been made is spinning out there and it will enter into people and so that's what I do at the end of my class most of the songs I sing are in Sanskrit because those are encoded vibrations they don't need to know but they feel it and these are again people who um do not listen to this type of music but now they do <laughs> they're like one woman's like said that she was she's been humming it and you know this is someone who's like Christian, like, and, you know, in all respects, maybe never would have been open to this, but because they've been opening their bodies and breathing in yoga, and they, and I've created a really beautiful safe space, and they like me, and they want to hear my music, you know, they're just getting encoded, you know, again, so I'm just, you know, this is a good reminder, and for me to say out loud to everyone and myself, like, I'm here in this place, raising the vibration. Like, and so is everyone, right? Like you said, you're spreading the light out, but like, that's also like physically, literally, energetically what I'm doing here because it's very dense around here. Yeah. Um, some places are higher, like Costa Rica. Ooh, doing okay over there. How about you come to Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I always felt like there was a weird reason why I came back here because yeah. you know I lived in like southwest and I lived okay. where the vibrations were very high and yeah. I I felt like I had to come back this way and I felt like I've really done a lot of work with the lake and I also mm -hmm. feel like I've done a lot of work with Syracuse because Syracuse is not like it's there's a, it's a very shadowy very heavy there's like a lot of crime there's a lot of poverty like there's a lot of energies that are just very um they just you know a lot of addiction like alcoholism yeah. drug addiction um just like I said poverty there's this like a ton of poverty going on and yeah. you know as I, I I personally choose to even drive through streets that I know are like, you know, that 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 have these stories, because yeah. I feel like me just passing through these streets and driving every day and bringing my energy through. And a lot of times I'll be singing in my car, and I'll yeah. be through the energy and the light everywhere. And like, you know, like, I know that that me physically doing that and having the intention because yes. intention is powerful, very, it's very powerful. powerful. Yep. I know that that is shifting things. You know, it's like, it's like um an instantaneous, instantaneous ceremony. And yeah. like, I'm sure that you understand this. Like I was just talking on my, one of my lives about how, when I was like, you know, back about, 15 20 years ago I was doing ceremony every single day like in a very serious way where I would like yeah. do stuff with crystals and candles and yeah. do you know set things up and say things and do things and I was very very you know very intentional about those ceremonies now I kind of am an in, like a, a walking ceremony in the sense yep. of how I function with people and with things like there's a lot of times that I'm sure it's the same with you where I go and do things and people have not a clue that I've just done something. Like they have no yeah. idea that the whole time I've been somewhere, I've been doing something. Oh, and yeah. then like, <laughs> but they they'll don't be like, to. I love to have your energy. You got such a grandmother energy, Jill. Well, that's well and good, but I'm actually doing things. Yeah. You just can't see them and you don't know. And it's like, how much time do you have? You know what I mean? Like, right. that and it's be not funny, but like, yeah. how much time do you really have? Like, I don't have time to explain all this and go through all this with you right now. Like, I have to do this and then I have to move on to the next yeah. thing. No, and luckily, they're everyone's being impacted. And so, usually, no words are necessary. And sometimes <laughs> words get in the way. And then sometimes, if people are overly focused on the words, then and then they they start getting like i'm so powerful okay okay whoa that's getting like 
the the I, you know, the ego, yeah, which we have, the ego. Yeah, ego. Yeah. But we you're not gonna get rid of it. It's there, but like, okay, bring it back to like, would you be okay just doing what you're doing and no one ever knew and never thanked you? Because guess what? It's probably gonna happen like that. And um it's happened like that for many, many years. Like me yeah. talking to you about these things is the first time in a public place in a public forum I, I've ever discussed these things like people have literally asked me many times in my life what I do and how I do it and I just say I I'm not you know like basically I'm not at the privy to talk about this right now and I'm not going to talk about this and I that's how I usually that's how I've usually handled it but I feel like right now because so many of us are actually standing in the in the forefront and mm-hmm. all these circumstances with these energies that it's really, really important for us all to discuss it, not in a sense of like me, Jill, but in the sense of like, this is what we're all doing and what we're, like how we're impacting because we need to help each other. And those of us that are doing this are helping others that are doing it. Like right. me and you having these conversations is, is empowering you and empowering me because yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not alone because for so long when I was very, very young, I felt so alone. Like I didn't have spiritual teachers or gurus or people that guided me or told me how to do this or do that. This was all internal. Like this oh, came yeah. from inside. Like it wasn't <laughs> external. That's why I know like from a very young age that was always meant to be something, to do something very, you know, integral in in the in the future of the planet. And I knew that, but I didn't understand what or how or anything. Yeah. Get one more thing we have in common. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, that's why we get, uh, you know, you're like, like-minded vibrations can be attracted to each other because it's a harmonious vibration like it's a harmonious interval frequency and are you you're familiar probably is it Richard Hawkins or yeah but the one who talks about this the scale of like which is related to emotions like fear is the lowest and it doesn't mean it's bad it's just long and it's really low and slow like a base which again it's not bad but fear does, we all know what fear feels like doesn't feel great and then he says the higher and higher you get and the scale goes I think it goes up to a, a thousand and so maybe an average person might be in a say a hundred to two hundred range of just like where they are but once you get into three or four hundred then what he starts talking about is that you your energy your yourself you are affecting hundreds to thousands of people. And again, we're always affecting someone. We're not special. Everyone's affecting everyone everywhere, either consciously or unconsciously. But the more that you consciously take a responsibility that you are affecting people and the higher your vibration gets, you are affecting thousands, you know, and then someone like Sadhguru and Dalai Lama, millions of people, like you can feel Sadhguru's energy if he's at Isha Institute an hour away from here. I could feel it from here if you were attuned to it. So that's why they're coming to these places because the, the energy is moving like waves and helping shift. <laughs> and, uh, I remember when I the 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 handful of times that I um, met Saima and been around her energy, and I just remember like feeling so grateful for what she was mm-hmm. doing for that area wherever she yeah. came, and right. I was like, and I remember I went after I after I experienced her the last time. I think it was in Albany. I want to say it was definitely in New York State, but I can't remember where. And um, I went to see her. And I brought this, this young guy that I had fr- been fr- friends with that, um, that never had any experience with any of this. And I really wanted him to feel it. And so I brought him for a darshan. And when we left, we went to this pizza shop <laughs> and I was literally carrying her energy with me. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, your shop is going to be blessed. I'm like, Saima is literally like a couple of miles away from here doing yeah. her work. I'm like, you're, you're going to be so blessed. Your shop is going to be so blessed. And I literally was like, you know, like I took, I had a picture of her that yeah. I got from the Darshan 
And I have a bunch of pictures of her and I gave it to him and I said, do me a favor, put this on your wall of your Mm. pizza shop. And so I said, I'm going to come back here one day. And I said, you're going to tell me how this pizza shop is affected. And I never got a chance to go back and, you know, catch up with him because I, because I didn't ever go back to that area again for any reason, but I did feel very like, and it's ironic that I'm ta- mentioning her because when I went to see her the last time, I literally, well, no, it wasn't the last time. I think it was the time before last. It was the second to last time when I went to see her. I actually was guided after I saw her to have a, to do my first podcast. So oh. if you ever watch my fir- very first podcast, it was like 10 years ago. I talk about her in that oh. podcast and cool. I felt, and, and, and I was scared to death. I was like, I did it like all, like I figured out how to get on line and do it all by myself. And I was like, very like, you have to do this. You have to do this now. It was like, that energy was very guiding to me. It was like very important for what, for me to say something or for me to use my throat chakra, you know, after yeah. this experience. And like, and it's funny because it was all my energy from her. Like yep. it was what she gave me. Like it, it was her. It's a, it's a big transmission that those people give because they're operating at a higher level, which again, doesn't mean better, just means they're actively channeling and working with their energies. And they've, you know, when you can access deeper wisdom, it just does things. And that's how I feel about Sadhguru. I'm not a devotee by any means, but this last time I actually finally experience like the full um full experience because uh my friend who is a advanced being he said that the most important thing for him before he goes to see Sadhguru is to connect to him in the astral realm and so and I'm always like yeah okay well good for you (laughs) and so then we go we get to the place and then we go to the Adi abode which is a giant meditation space but then there's this inside the meditation area, um, there's a giant head and it's the Adi Yogi head. So it basically, it kind of looks like Shiva. And so then I get down and I meditate and, you know, there are all these people everywhere and I go into my space and then, and again, now I'm deep in my space, my eyes are closed. And then um, I see this figure appear out from the side of Adi Yogi's head in its Sadhguru. And I'm like, whoa. And he appears in this interesting shape. And then I can see myself from above. And then here I am in my body and all these things. And then he goes, whoop, whoop, bloop. And I hear these sounds. And he, and then, and then he just disappeared like smoke. And I was like, whoa. But then I realized what it had done. It was an energetic alignment because this was after our pyro experience and my world was rocks. But he he brought it was like this alignment. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, they do that. They do that. Then I came out of that meditation. And then we go and then he's talking and all of this stuff. And his words are really irrelevant. That's not what his words are entertainment. Then he leads (laughs) us into a meditation. And that's when I, and then again, because I had been primed from him, I, when he started chanting, I could feel the full effect of his energetic transmission. And it was so strong. It came in and it was just like, like there. And that's when a lot of people actually, they start freaking out because again, the energy is so strong. People start screaming, crying, shaking, hitting, you know, it sounds, it's, it can be quite disturbing actually. Like if you're not ready, you're like, what's going on? But I just sat there and I was breathing and it was coming through me. And after that, then my entire energy field was expanded maybe for God, I don't know who knows miles. I have no idea. And it was clear. And it was like this huge blessing and, and just, and, and just things that, words can't describe but it was like and then I my head, it's, yeah it's, it's like so, oh I see now it's so hard to explain too like when you go <laughs> through that it's so hard to explain it to other people like yeah. what that actually that experience feels with, like I actually recently Saima was actually on like a video like a live yeah. I think it was Facebook or something and I she was doing darshan and I actually sat there and I felt it 
Yep. And I was like, wow, this is the first time that I've ever felt it this strong from right. her from a remote situation. Like, exactly. you know, and I was like, wow, like, I don't even have to go. You know, Not I don't even have, and, and like, she's, she's told me that like telepathically, like when I've gone to see her, she always says to me telepathically, Jill, you don't have to come to see me to tap into me. And I'm like, yep. every time I say, I know, but I like the experience. But it can be nice to be in their presence, which the same goes for Sadhguru. Anyone who asks a question or anything of him, he, he, he grants it immediately. And another weird thing my friend says, cause he's, he goes to this place, he's done all the training. And I usually have, I'm a pretty strong manifester. And so I actually, um, in that, in that meditative space, I was like, I, I, I want it to go like this. You, you know, last time I went, he asked questions at the end and then it was just not a great way to end things. I was like, this time it needs to be like, people ask questions and then you end with a meditation and that happened. Then my friend let me know. He said, just so you know, Sadhguru has never done that before. And I said, well, I had the intention he would. And he said, yes, because anyone who has an intention and they actually hold it strong enough, he said they, he will honor it. And that will honor it. That's very, um, that's awesome. That's really, that's really next level. Um, that he's able to tap into all that. And, and, and one of the things that I learned from Sai Ma when I very first saw her now, this was back in 2011. And right. when I wasn't familiar, like I knew what a guru was, but like, I wasn't familiar with like their abilities and, you know, I just wasn't into it, into the depths of it. And when I had that first experience with her, I remember the, the, having the experience where I was sitting in a room and she was teaching, like she was giving like a, a, t a lesson of sorts to this big, huge room of people. And I became very clear and very understood that she was talking to each of us individually. And mm. I was like, holy shit, because not only did was she talking to me, just to me, and but she was talking just to everyone else simultaneously. Yep. And I was like, now that's next level. I was like, that's badass. Like I was that is like, badass. And then the fact that I could understand and feel that she was doing it, I felt very like happy about where I was in my, you know, in my spiritual practice that I was yep. able to understand that. You know what I mean? Because I was like in that energetic space of like so open, so free, so yep. balanced, so clear. And I could see and feel I'm gonna have to jump into my room because my son is actually coming home. So okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh I felt like I felt like I was taken to the next level while she was, but she wasn't purposely doing anything for me strategically. It was just because I was in her presence and I was tapped right. in and I was open. And so I was open to the fact that she was doing this. And like, yeah. when I had that kind of epiphany, I was like, oh my God, if I try to explain this to like the average Joe, they're going to be like, Jill, you've lost your mind. Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It is. A, I mean, it, it could be a fine line. Like if someone get lost, that you could get lost out there in the ether, but it's, it's just wild. All the, all the things that unfold. I mean, it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder and hopefully you're okay with things completely becoming transparent and multidimensional and woo. <laughs> I know I had this experience once and this is kind of like off topic but for some reason it just came up in my consciousness and it was so next level so like I was I remember I was dropping my friends off at their friends <laughs> and I was driving and I was driving down a road and what happened was a car was coming straight at me. They like went in the wrong lane. And what happened was, and this is so crazy. It's just one of those situations that you have in your life. And it's like so unexplainable. It's so unbelievable that it's like, you know, if you talk about it, hardly anyone's going to believe you <laughs> kind of thing. So what I did was I came out of my body and I physically moved the car to the other lane. Wow. 
And I all simultaneously while I was driving. So like yep. part of me was still driving in my car. It was all like in a split second. Like I stopped time. I quantum stopped time. I got out of my body. I moved the car over to the other lane, got back in my body and continued to drive. But the crazy thing was I was completely consciously aware of all that. Yeah, that's like, I mean, I wonder if that's like um, accessing your soul, like, or, you know, so uh, it's hard. A lot of, there are a lot of people who have language for these things, like your um, physical or your physical astral double body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's a, a it doesn't matter. I think that's, that's really wild. And I think, I mean, I think those things are super cool. And I got to tell you, like, I only spend time at this level I'm at now with people who resonate with me. Like, uh, if I'm going to spend time, like, working with someone or just whatever, but, like, I only want to be with people who are operating at these places that we can feel, like, dialogue and expand and have a good time. And I don't want to explain shit that I want them to be like, oh, that was so weird. Because <laughs> half the shit that comes out of my mouth is going to sound totally insane to a lot of people. <laughs> it is It is very true. It is very true. Um, but that story is, like, that's, like, a way back. That was, like, back in, I think, 2011, I want to say. Wow. Um, so it was a very, very long time ago. But it was, like, it was when I was starting to, like, be more online with, like, who I am and what I'm supposed to yeah. do. Like, I've always had an understanding of all these wild things. But then I had so many, like, unbelievable things happen around 2011, 2012. Like, in those two couple year periods, I had, like, yeah. a lot of truly, truly amazing things happen to me. But that was just one of them. And I remember my friend was at my house waiting for me because we were going to hang out. And I remember coming back and just explaining to him like oh my god you cannot just you cannot believe what just happened to me and like just like trying to put words into it and just being like shaken up like in a good way not like yeah. like shaken up like upset but like shaken up like oh my gosh like I just had this out of body experience like holy yeah. cow like I've never heard of anybody I've never spoken to anybody personally that's gone through this exact yeah. thing that I just went through and I'm like I don't even know like what to say about it, you know, and like my friends completely believed me because they were into the same stuff. So yeah. it was like I was able to talk about it, but it was um, it was like definitely next level. Definitely is, next level. I, I mean, I never I've never heard of that. I've heard of people who like travel and like have other out of body experiences, but I've never heard of someone who like stopped something you know, like that's pretty cool. And it's obviously you were in your deeper awakening or who knows. Right. But, um, well, it, it kind of reminds me of that movie, um, that sci-fi movie with that gentleman, um, Dr. Dr. Strange, oh, Dr. Strange. Oh yeah. I love those movies. So that I, it, it kind of brings me to like thinking about that movie. Like when I saw that movie, mm -hmm. I, when I very first saw that movie, I was like, whoa like I felt so deeply connected to like that me character like me I too, felt like because it, it's it's real like uh, maybe not exactly how they presented it but everything that they're doing is a potential and there are people out there who can do really powerful energetic things and you know what they're doing when he's opening like that image he uses he's like creating a mandala and that's how you open a portal like these are things that people yep. who have deep meditation or travel in the astral realm or do all this stuff this is what they're doing and so a lot of the movies out there that people are like it's just a movie it's like well is it no is it it's I have I have uh, learned at a very young age and I, I can't explain to you, like, I'm not going to be able to give you sort of like a, a a play by play, like, this is how you do it kind of thing. But I can tell you that when my kids were growing up, I was a single mom of two. And when my kids were little, I had to drop them off to the daycare at 730 in the morning. I literally had to play with time in the morning so I could manifest 
getting everything taken care of, getting myself ready for work, getting my kids ready, getting them dressed, getting them fed, getting them ready. I literally was able to play with time. And like, that's something that like, I've been able to do since that time. And I don't, play around with time like that anymore. Like I only do it if I really, really have to, I do it still, but I don't, I don't make a habit of doing it, but it's definitely something that I've been able to tap into. That's not something that I can, like I said, I can't give you a play by play of how I do it. It's just something that I know how to do. And and bending it. I mean, because time is a construct that we've invented that doesn't exist in a lot of other other places or dimensions it's just something so if you can have a belief that it's something that can be bent bent or warped then it will be you know um Mm -hmm. or the flow state that's why sometimes 30 seconds you're like that was so fast or and, and like time is weird you're like oh that was 30 minutes it felt like five minutes or if something's really like you're suffering you know, one minute feels like forever. <laughs> it's all your mm-hmm. perception. Yeah. Like perception is really a big part of this whole thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I want to also really quickly, I want to get close this up pretty soon, but yeah. I wanted to also talk to you about um, my next guest that's going to be mm. coming on the next podcast. And I hope you get a chance to watch it because it's yeah, going to be, what? it's going to be a really good one. His name is David Bennett. Okay. And he is unbelievable. He has had multiple near-death experiences. Mm. And I met him many, many years ago. We used to work together at a hospital. And he's written books. He's mm. He used to run the New York State chapter of near-death experiencers. Oh, wow. And he's actually been on a show that Morgan Freeman had that oh. was, um, I think it was on Netflix. I, I can't remember where it was, all the places it was on, but he was actually on his show talking about um, near-death experiences. So he's very, very, um, he's like a teacher of sorts when it comes cool. to that, because he's yeah. had multiple of his own. He's friends with like Raymond Moody, who was the one yeah. that coined near-death experience. Oh, yeah. And he was good friends with him. I've actually met him through David's near death experience or group. So I've no. met like the big names like Raymond Moody, Eben Alexander, like, you know, some of the big names of the people that actually have had those experiences. I've actually yeah. met them and listened to them speak. And he, like I said, he ran that chapter for probably like 10 years and then he moved, he moved down South. And so then okay. he gave up his reins to the chapter because, you know, he, he wanted to, to do something different. But sure. anyway, he is such a vessel of information and he just has so much like he does healing work, but he doesn't mm-hmm. call it any certain. It's like his own energy work that he does yeah. with people. He's really um, he's he's so evolved, like cool. so, so evolved. And his energy is so beautiful. And I can't wait for him to come on. So that's going to happen Sunday afternoon. So I'll definitely have that downloaded by Sunday evening Awesome for everybody to watch. So I hope you get a chance to view that. Um, I still have uh, Miguel Angel Silva that's going to come on. Right. I just don't know when. He, It'll happen. I, yeah, he, I reached out to him. He's extremely busy right now. He's doing a lot of readings and yeah. he's very, very, very busy. So that probably won't happen until maybe like the end of the summer, but that's coming up. Um, I hope to have at least one, you know, very, very uh, versed in their craft person on every week, nice. Um, you know, that's been, you know, that's dealt with the stuff we're dealing with for their whole life and has yep. like a lot of experience to like share and stuff. So yeah, that's what's kind of coming up in the forefront, but how are you liking our little, sh- our little episodes? How are you liking I like, it so I far? I like it. I enjoy it. And you never know. It's going to kind of come out. I enjoy dialoguing and I like, I like sharing to whoever might want to listen to it. I, I think it's a good thing. I felt called to put more out there. So this works for me and you know, if it impacts even just a few people, then that's great. Yeah. And I feel like it's good for both of us because it's helping us get more comfortable in this platform because sure. you just don't know how and what we're supposed to do next. And I feel yeah. like we're getting 
we're getting like it's becoming more muscle memory for us and mm -hmm. that's really important i feel like i'm supposed to be taking this whole podcasting thing to the next level and yeah. so i appreciate you um going uh on the journey with me every yeah, week I'm excited. So. I'm excited it's fun it's something to look forward to and uh <laughs> i don't have any problems talking or like you know some people don't like talking or the the camera or thing like the more people the better like if i can talk about what i'm interested to talk about i'll i'll have a microphone in front of millions of people you know that could be really scary to some people but i'm like bring it on i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> well and i just i just feel like it it's it's hitting two bases it's it's very creative um it's very in the flow state and i also feel like it's very um it's very it's seva because I feel like us sharing anything that we have either that we have experienced or that we might have some sort of wisdom or knowledge in um yeah. I feel like that is paying it forward out to the the universe to the to the to the world and so even you know the right person one person that sees it that it could make an impact on them in a in a very big way to maybe open up a doorway to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing that's how it all starts it's a, yep. you know like i've had so many great information informational tools come through podcasts mm -hmm. in the last 10 to 15 years and they there's certain things that have led me to people that i've actually had healings with and yeah. that's like really like next level and like todd medina like he's helped thousands of lives like yeah. the amount of you know impact he has had personally is like only what i aspire to to have sure. that kind of impact to help that many kind of people so i i just i'm excited and you know i look forward to our next our next chat um yeah. thanks for being flexible about our days because i know sometimes our days don't coordinate so i appreciate you uh being flexible with that it's all good <laughs> awesome well i guess we're gonna jump off now um do you have any closing words or anything you wanted to say to close it off nothing immediate is jumping out nothing all right sorry well, there's no insightful words <laughs> <laughs> any word is insightful from you annalee don't the be word sick. the words that i just you say all the time is sat nam truth is my identity that's the word uh -huh. that i have in my head a lot because usually like i'm chan usually i'm chanting in my mind or out loud so there it's really like my mind is a mantra <laughs> So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll yes yes i do that i have many mantras flowing through as well yes. well with that said i'm going to sign off right now my friend okay. sending you love and light and until, we see you again. until next time yeah Bye.